The 1 0 pitch. Swing and a miss by Rohrmeyer, and he falls down. <laughs> he's laying flat on his back, and he's helped up by the catcher. Rohrmeyer's an interesting guy. Count is 1 and 1 to him right now. Spent a lot of time talking to Rohrmeyer uh, prior to today's ball game at the hotel. And at one point, we were talking about uh, food, and uh, he said, uh, You know, I'm I'm just a little confused about the uh, difference between Hispanic food and uh, and Spanish food. He says, you know, I'd like to go out and get some uh, Spain food. <laughs> what are you talking about, Dan? The one one pitch. This is outside. He says, you know, you know, Spain food, the kind of food that they eat in Spain. I go, well, that would be like Spanish food, right? He goes, oh, well, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> So Dan Rohrmeyer's uh, world there is Hispanic food, Spanish food, and Spain food. <laughs>
Mike Moore, I was watching him on the monitor as the game is being televised tonight here in Allentown. Mike just talking to himself the whole way out to right field as the camera was on him, and I'm sure he's just frustrated beyond belief. I mean, he's has not uh, come through this season at the plate. You know, in situation after situation, he is striking out at a frightening pace. After Brockton lost the opener of the Allentown series, Mike Fisher and Connor Brooks combined on a three-hitter and lost one to nothing. Then young Kevin Lynn stepped up the next night with five and two-thirds innings of one-hit relief. Marty Weymouth got the save in the 3-2 to two win. In the series finale, the Rocks scored nine runs and lost 15 to 9. Baker and Rochford were pounded, but Brockton still had a chance to win. Now it was Nick Stelzner's turn to throw gas on the fire. He will turn it over to Nick Stelzner, the right-hander. Now that the Rocks are back in this ball game, it's important that Stelzner turns in a good effort here as this team trails 9 to 7. A game that they were losing 9 to 2. With the numbers on Stells, he is 0-0 with a 4.82 earned run average. Nine and a third innings, nine hits allowed. He has walked seven, however, and has struck out two. 3-1 offering now from Stells. Swung on, hit deep to right field. Way back, looking up is more, and that ball is gone. Two-run homer by Stephen Larkin, and the beat goes on. It is 13 to 9. Well, Stelzner has not done a, a whole lot to make a strong argument for his spot on this staff. After the series, Ed told me both Stelzner and Kevin Codres would be released. I wondered if Josh Spurrow and Mike Moore would also get the axe. Ed had dropped Spurrow all the way down to ninth in the lineup, Moore seventh. When I asked him about the lineup, Ed said there wasn't any more he could do, quote, because they won't let me shoot them. There was one guy who was making Ed happy, though. Carlos Rosario. We're ready to play some baseball as Carlos Rosario steps up to the plate. Rosario continues to swing a hot bat. He is just going great guns. A 383 batting average. Leads the league with 20 runs scored. Leads the league with 31 hits. Leads the league in stolen bases with 15. What can't this guy do? Right-hander stepping in against the lefty Carlos Medina, who looks in for the sign. And the 0-1 pitch is hit high in the air to left field. Going back is Cerrone, back to the warning track. Jumps up, and it is up off the top of the wall. Onto the warning track, Rosario headed for third base. Here comes the throw to third. is not in time as Rosario slides in for the leadoff triple. The Rocks limped home with a 9-12 and record, and they were greeted by more nasty weather. Yet they were also greeted by more huge, enthusiastic crowds at Campanelli Stadium as the fans once again ignored the rain and the cold temperatures and turned the ballpark into one giant party. Mark Asano and Brooks gave the fans something to cheer about as they held the hot-hitting Quebec Capitals to six hits in a 7-3 victory. Carlos Rosario had now hit safely in 21 out of 22 games. But in Game 2, on a wet field, the Rocks were being shut out, and Carlos had gone 0 for 3 as he came to the plate to lead off the 8th inning. Tremblay follows Tim Stanton and Danny Prada to the hill, and thus far, the Rocks have only two hits in this contest. Right-hander kicks and delivers. Swung on line to the right field, and there's Carlos with the base hit. The hitting streak continues. And more importantly for the Rocks, they've got their leadoff man aboard. Now possibly some bad news as Carlos is uh, hobbling away from first base. He is safe at first with a single. This is something you hate to see on a wet surface. Don't know how much that uh, contributed to what's going on here, but Carlos is obviously in some pain. He has reached back to the, uh, to the right hamstring. And this is scary. If the, uh, if the Rocks were to lose uh, Carlos here, uh, it would be a major, major blow. He's the table setter. He provides a lot of pop. He does so many things well. He's leading the team in so many different categories. Ouch. Be sure to click the subscribe button to follow my wild and wacky journey with the Brockton Rocks because more episodes are on the way. Thanks for watching.